So we're going to be talking about finite state machines. And a finite state machine is a machine that has a finite number of states. And it's a way of uh, modeling systems in computer science. It's something that um, we use often to demonstrate how systems work. And a good example of a system that's a finite state machine is the vending machines that give water. So basically you put a coin in, whether that's a one dirham coin or a 50 fill coin or a 25 fill coin, and then depending on whether there's enough money in the system, you can either press the water bottle button to get a bottle of water, or you can click the cancel button to get your change back. And what we do is we draw diagrams to represent uh, these states. So let's say we have one state that's zero, which means there's no money inside. And we have another state, one, which has one there on inside. Now, the other, these are called states, obviously, and to get from one state to another is called the transition. This kind of sucks. I'll use it quickly. Um, now, these transitions have uh, specific conditions that you need to get from this state to this state, sometimes. So not necessarily, but they can. So for example here, the condition would be that you put a one uh, there of coin into the vending machine. And from there, what you can do is hit the water bottle key to get your water bottle. So if you dispense, you'll now be back at the first state, which was that there's uh, no money in the vending machine. So here are two of the states that you have in um, this machine, which is the water bottle uh, vending machine. And uh, there's a finite number of them, hence finite state machines. Now this diagram is quite simple, and this is something you can visualize in your head. But they, they can be quite complicated, these diagrams that show finite state machines. For example, you, I should do that in blue. you could get to um, a state where there's 50 fills in the machine, if you put in a 50 fill coin. And then to get back to the, to the one state, you'd have to put in another 50 fill coin. Now, of course, if you um, put in a 25 fill coin, you'd have a 0.25, and then you can also have a 0.75. So there's now more and more states, as you can see, that are all linked together um, by different transitions between them. You could even go straight from 0.25 to 0.75. And, um, okay, it's getting, it's getting more and more complicated. You can see that this is a this models how the states would transition from one to the other. You can see the states that link the uh, the, so the transitions that link the different states. Uh, one more thing you could do though is instead of getting water, you could say actually I don't want water anymore. Cancel. That would also bring us back to the zero state. But then you could cancel from any of these states as well. From here as well. And from here. So now you can see why it's useful to draw these kinds of diagrams, because it can be hard to reason about what will happen when a certain operation is done on a machine, or when a certain input is given. And these are basically inputs, the transition lines. They're basically, uh, in, you can think of it as inputs to a program, or inputs, literally inputs of coins to a machine. And um, we do this a lot in computer science. We, we often represent finite state machines, especially for systems in real life, like vending machines, like for example turnstiles at airports, like, uh, or uh, at some kind of place where you have to pay to get a trolley, like those are all finite state machines. And interestingly, finite state machines can be used to represent a language. So not just a programming language, it could also be a human language or some kind of uh, you know, like number system, or you can you can define rules using finite state machines. So let's say we want to define the rules for a name. What we could uh, have. So imagine, uh, actually, let's think of the rules for a name first before we try and draw this diagram. You could have a prefix like Mr., Mrs., or uh, Sir, or like whatever, Doctor. But most people, you generally have one prefix. But then you can have any number of names, so first name, any number of middle names, and a last name. And then some people have a suffix as well. So, we could start the first state as being prefix. And then we could 
Actually, let's not even call this state prefix. Let's just call this state one. Let's say we add a prefix. Now we're in state two. But you can't really have um, a name that's just a prefix. You also need a name part, at least one name. So we can draw another transition to this state. And at this point, your name is valid. If you have a prefix and a name, it's kind of valid. So we represent this often by a double circle. When we're defining a language in a finite state machine, we say that a double circle means that now this name is accepted. So if I'm creating a name, and I say Mr., and then I say Wood, it's done. It's now a valid name. But you could have more names. You could be Mr. Mark Wood, or you could be um, Mr. Ojun Kwan, or you could be someone with three names, Mr. Murtaza Muhammad Javed. So we can also draw arrows that go back into the same state. You could keep adding more and more names, and it would still be a valid name, uh, as long as you want to go. And I mentioned about the suffix. We can obviously have multiple accepted states, so we could say if you add a suffix, that's still valid, but you can't add any more. So now we can't add any more names after the suffix. <coughs> any questions about this so far? Yeah? You know the first accepted states? Yeah. Does you? Yeah, this one. So, like, you know how you keep going back into that? Would that be for middle names and surnames as well? Or would that, would, would that be a different sort of... Well, under this definition, we've called first names, last names, and, and uh, middle names all names. So they're all part of the same category. So any number of names that you add to the middle part of your name will be accepted. Um, and one more thing. What if you don't have a prefix or you don't like to use your prefix? You could, go, you could jump straight from this state to this state with just having a single name, and that would also be an accepted name. So here we've, des we've designated the rules for a name using a finite state machine, uh, which is one interesting thing we can do, and we can often demonstrate the rules of a language, and more specifically a programming language, and what kind of expressions it, it's allowed to take using these diagrams. However, obviously, as Will pointed out, the, this uh, representation is quite simplified. We don't make a distinction between first names, middle names, and last names. And if it was kind of more complicated, we would get a very, very big graph with not, um, not very easy to understand. So there's another thing that we can use to define languages in computer science, which is known as bacchus nar form, or BNF for short. And BNF is essentially um, a definition of what certain terms in a language can look like. So if I, if we use stick with the name example, we can say that name can be, so this symbol just means uh, is allowed to be, or can look like, or something like that. It could be a prefix, and then the middle part, we'll just call it the middle part, which includes all the names, so your first name, last name, and any middle names. We'll call it mid for short, and then a suffix. So we've defined what a name is, but we haven't defined what a prefix or mid or a suffix is. But we can easily do that on other lines. We can say that a mid. Well, a mid would consist of uh, words, a series of words. It could be any number of words. It could you could have a person with five names or with one name. So we could say it could be one word. Or, so we use a pipe to designate or, uh, two words, a word, and then word again. Okay, that's inefficient because we need to have, we need to say, we need to have so many or statements. We need to go, okay, it could be one word, two words, three words, four words. What if you have a guy with uh, 9,000 names? Well, it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to define all of that. So what we can actually do is define it recursively and say that it can either be a word or a word followed by a name. Sorry, not name, mid, we've called it mid. So that way, a valid definition for mid is just one word, or it's one word followed by another mid. So it's a recursive definition. So that allows basically any number of words to count as a mid. Now, these um, expressions here, these terms are known as non-terminals because we've actually defined what they can be. But there are, some, um, there are some types of expressions that are terminals, whereas, where we've literally defined their possibilities. 
So, for example, to show you what I mean by that, if we were to define a prefix, uh, there's only a few prefixes that are recognized in the world. So you can have Mr. Uh, or Mrs. or Dr., for example. There's a few others. But now these are terminal because these are literal definitions. Uh, so these would never appear on the left side of the definition because they are actually strings as they are. They're actually what's allowed to be those characters. For suffix, we can do the same. We could define like Esquire or Senior, Junior. And then um, the, only, the only thing left to define is word. So now word, we can also define um, recursively. So a word is a string of characters, or uh, actually more specifically alphabetical characters. So it could be either a single character, or defining it recursively, it could be a character followed by another word. Recursive definition of word. All we need to do now is define what a character is. And for that, we'd have to use terminals, because uh, we, could either, we could either simplify it and say it's between A to like Z, and then say like capitals as well. Or we could say A or B or C, and so on. And now we have a proper, rigorous definition of what a name can be using Bacchus NAR form. And it's actually quite easy to understand if you go down and figure out, and it's, and it's even easier to test whether a specific um, name matches this format. You can just see if the first bit is a prefix, uh, or if the middle part, for some reason, doesn't have any words, that would fail. And, and I missed out something actually, because your name doesn't necessarily have to have a prefix and a suffix. So we could just say, or it can just be the mid, or it can just be prefix and then mid, or, or all the other combinations of the only important part being the mid. So now, now we have a proper definition of a name, and this is why Bacchus Nor form is kind of more useful than finite state machines for defining languages. So. That's basically these two topics that are kind of linked, but they're also quite separate and their uses are quite different. And we will cover them more thoroughly later. Any questions? You said the things inside the that you're supposed to state like Mr. and Mrs. are called terminals, right? Yeah. What are the things inside the things called? Non terminals. Non terminals. And also the whole finite state machine in fact is in our form. Mm -hmm. Just to help us as humans understand the system, right? There's no we can't run this through a program. No, yeah, so these are, that's right, good point. These are um, theoretical, they're models for humans. They're like, they're abstract and they're not something that's, there is a definition for Bacchus Nor form, there's like a specification, but at the end of the day, it's what's useful for us. It's not useful directly for computers. Okay. Anyway, anything else? Cool.